Hey guys, it's Beta. Today I'm going to review for you the Leap Motion controller that was just officially released for the public. And this is actually the consumer version with the consumer set hardware. We're going to check it out, do a quick unboxing and a quick demo on our system. I'll check it out. The Leap Motion controller is available for purchase from leapmotion.com. If you go to the website, you're able to purchase it for $79.99. It's currently available in consumer version, and the model that I'm currently reviewing for you is the consumer model. I was able to get in on the pre-orders not that long ago. Once you install and set up the application, you'll be able to see the Airspace home screen, and I'll walk you through a little bit more on this. But these are some of the main applications that are currently available. You have a link to the Airspace store, which essentially opens up your browser. You have your orientation, you're able to go through again and a few different applications that are uh, going to be useful for you. The main one that I, I definitely show you guys to, uh, in this review is the touchless application, which enables you to control your Windows 7 uh, as well as Windows 8 uh, type uh, PCs um, with uh, using your fingers. And there's also a version of this for the, Mac and, uh, for the Mac side, and I'll try to show you guys some screenshots on that one. Um, and of course, there's some games. The box is very simple. It basically just says Leap Motion, shows you a picture of the uh, controller itself. When we open it up, it says welcome to a whole uh, to the whole new world. Activate your Leap Motion controller. Go to leapmotion.com forward setup. You pick up the controller itself. Very small. Again, the size of a USB thumb drive. Proprietary USB connector. Uh, very nice non non slip. You know, bottom again says Leap Motion controller and gives us an option of cables, a long and a short cable, and a small user manual. Overall, not a lot of things in there that you could use. Uh, the short cable is pretty short actually, but uh, should be pretty pretty useful if you're using it on a laptop. If you're using it on a, on a very big desktop computer, uh, you probably want to use a running a long cable. Well, let's check it out on the actual computer. I'm going to try it out first with the PC. Okay, so when you first install the application after you go through the setup, your, the main thing you're going to notice here is essentially your Airspace Home. This is where your main installed apps are going to be. You have the Leap Motion um, App Store, which is straight over on the main page. Then you have your orientation, which comes back again. You can go through it the first time. After that, you, uh, it installs by default a set of applications. The Shimsham, Lotus, Cut the Rope, and uh, where the main downloaded ones that were already installed. I installed Caterpillar Count and Touchless for Windows. Uh, touch this with Windows is what allows me to do these type of gestures on the screen and I'm hoping you guys can see these. Um, it will track all my fingers. So if, if I want to go into this one. So if we go into the orientation and you get to see the main interface and the way it works. So essentially it just shows you that it's tracking you. It goes in. Just essentially you're moving things in the sky, these little fire fire things turn on when you're touching them and it's showing you the range of motion so as you get out of it you realize it's not sensing your fingers in this level and once you get your fingers away it stops and it'll go to the next level. So we'll go to the next one. And this is more of a, a three-dimensional view of where the sensing comes in. So in essence the cameras are located in, these, in this area so it's vertical and um, the way it, it's doing it, hor the horizontal and vertical coverage essentially is just upwards so it doesn't see anything at the bottom side but anything above it will see that. Um, here it's not showing us our fingers but in the next demo it'll let us uh, show the tracking, the correct tracking for all of our uh, digits. And you can see it tracks the fingers correctly but I find it very interesting that uh, at just out of the box initial release it has problems tracking all of the fingers. It'll see them at one point, but it's twitching for no reason. My hands are not moving, but then it's moving by itself. And so you notice it comes in and out, but see at this one right now, it's connected all 10. So I can move my fingers, it has the axis, it just sees exactly where it, where it is, but it doesn't see the fingers at all times. So if I put my fingers straight on it like this, I can see them, which I think that's the, maybe the more optimal way. Uh, but as long as you're not doing kind of a tilt position and if you combine fingers next to each other it, they disappear So it stops tracking your fingers if they're connected. They have to be separate And then this is where we get to draw so it's using our fingers and It has to be a certain depth to it for it to be able to activate So this is where it comes in when you start you know controlling the screen 
So in this situation, you guys figure out what I just felt. The orientation is very quick, very easy. Um, the main applications that you get with it are very simple. To launch the touchless application, you, you turn it on and it'll ask you for admin access and then it'll be installed and it'll run in the bottom right side of your screen. It looks it's similar to three little bubbles on the right and they have three modes, disabled, basic and advanced um, in the PC side. On the Mac side, there's four modes. Uh, there's basic, intermediate, and advanced. Um, and I'll hopefully be able to show you a little bit of that um, also. Uh, so once you have that activated, your fingers get tracked and you're able to basically select different things. The basic interface is simple. Um, one finger is to select. It's floating as long as it's within a certain range. Once you get closer, it turns green. The green option, obviously, at that point, you're selected. Uh, it will track everything to the screen itself. So I just close the window. Um, and if I wanna, so this is this is a good uh, segue to this application. This is Google Earth. I installed it. It has a, uh, it does say that it's supposed to be compatible with it. Um, you have to go under the tools options and under navigation enable controller for it to run or to work with it. Uh, the only concern is I think it maybe either is a compatibility issue or a driver issue, but. Out of the box, if you try to put your hands over it, it starts spinning very, very fast. If you put, and you have to kind of center the, the circle where it is, it slows it down. You can go right, you can go left, you can spin the earth. I think the controls just need to be a little harder. And when you go in with two fingers, it just goes berserk. It just does not. And if it's an experience situation on my side, I, I'm not sure. I do have um, studio lightings right now so that it gives me the high definition uh, tracking so that there's no problem with lighting. Uh, so that's one of my concerns here. Uh, but once we get out of Google Earth, which I think is a software thing, and we start looking into regular Google Maps. So if you like using Google Maps and you want to just impress your friends, uh, you're able to basically, obviously, you know, you track your one finger, you can select the area. And then if you use two fingers, you can do, you know, tracking. You can zoom out. And the way you do this is, uh, so you, you select and then you zoom out. And then you can basically, if you move your fingers together, you can just put them in the right, right area. And here's Los Angeles. It's easy enough. And if I want to track certain things in there, I just click here and I select the area that I want it to be. Uh, again, the two finger is the easy way. I, uh, the best process where I've seen a lot of people is they try to use the two fingers from the same hand. It's great if you're just trying to move things. If you're trying to zoom in, it's not as easy. I find the two finger, uh, finger use the same way that the, the demos or a lot of the demos are done uh, will be easier. So in this situation, I see here um, the Las Vegas golf course. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And we'll let it, oops. Then it'll give us the name of the park. And then we can select Street View. Again, navigation works the same way. Again, the controller is very, very accurate. That's the, one of the main things about it. That once, it once you have it correctly uh, running, and again, you can you can track multiple fingers. You can do the fingers up and down, and you can see exactly how how, how good the areas are. Okay, and then so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you guys how it works on the Mac side. It's a little different. Uh, the Mac OS X is a little bit more compatible with it, so you'll notice that. When you're running on the Mac OS, uh, you're able to basically do the main gestures of uh, flipping between home screens, uh, the, the environments as far as you're uh, on your desktop. Also being able to turn on expose and be able to select things are a little different. So I, I definitely think that the, the software is more optimized for the Mac. A lot of their demos, if you watch, are done on a Mac. Um, so it, I think it's overall a very good piece of software that you can use. Uh, I find the Mac side a little bit more uh, more useful than the PC side, specifically if you're running Windows 7. And if you're running Windows 8, I think you have you have more f 
interesting parts because of the Windows 8 uh, tabs and you're able to use your finger as far as you know moving things and you just again it's I think it's the, the process more overall is just for us to get used to the fact that you know we're using our hands and even though it's supposed to be a natural process it's not natural for us to be able to basically click and then just move uh, you know just move it on, on this axis because when you move your hand you usually you just you move your fingers and then you do both you don't you just do one and you have to kind of station yourself figure out get connected and then move and you know again it, it works very very well and you're able to select certain things and then you go into them so it's not hard to navigate uh, once you once you get the hang of it the controller works very nice I like it uh, they did just push an update today is Friday and they pushed out an update for the actual the PC side of the uh, interface on the leap controller and I find that the sensitivity is even better it works okay in, in low light uh, situations and I say low light I'm talking about normal light so if you're running like normal house lights uh, tungsten light bulbs you're okay with it um, I once I started doing the review and I was able to put in my studio lights on it went into a uh, high performance mode where it was able to be get in a much more precise uh, you know finger uh, calibration and you can see basically that I'm able to you know just exactly move my finger and it, it literally moves to the to the very very smallest level and it's very 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 accurate it's in the sense of how it do how it does things this is the uh, Corel draw application that comes free on the airspace for the PC side it doesn't come on the Mac side and it works very well uh, again I have the motion sensor right here you're able to move it you're, and you know you do get a long and a short cable so I'm using the short cable right now since the sensor is close to my monitor it works great on laptops if you want to try it out there um, one of the harder things I found when I was using this is uh, not all applications are meant to use this now they do show you how to use it with Google Earth but for some reason the calibration on Google Earth was totally whacked and every time I try to use it the first thing is either goes in super speed mode or if I do slow down it ends up being uncontrollable I found Google Maps to be a little bit more uh, functional in the sense of zooming in and zooming out. Uh, and again, a lot of people will probably be tempted to use two fingers on one hand to zoom in and zoom out, but it's better if you use two because then you have the more functionality of pinch. Uh, I know you're trying to, you're more, uh, my initial instinct was to uh, try to do a pinch and zoom the way I do it on my smartphone or my tablet. So it's not the same function. You do have to kind of use the two hands to be able to get there. Um, is this something that you could use on a daily basis to be able to control your device? Uh, I say if you're running Mac OS X, uh, it's something that you can do to switch between applications and do things like that. So I can see where you reason on the keyboard and you want to switch, you just bring up Expose, flip, go to the next application and do that. Uh, it helps you from having to switch back to your mouse. Uh, is it something that you can do very well on Windows 7? Uh, not necessarily. Windows 7 doesn't have a lot of tab uh, features such as Windows 8, which is similar in the sense where you have the ability to switch and then your buttons are much bigger to be able to concentrate on. Unfortunately, I don't have a Windows 8 machine to be able to test this on. I can tell you that it works much better again um, on, on Mac OS X compared to o OS, um, Windows 7. Um, I like the fact that you're able to use the, the functionality to be able to switch between desktops, and uh, I think I included a few of the videos in there as well for you guys. Um, check it out. Let me know what you think. If you do have access to the hardware, definitely check it out. Let me, again, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, it, I was able to get it on the pre-orders, so I was able to get it around the $69 price tag before it went up to $80. Uh, again, it's not that bad. It came to me um, a few days ago, and uh, the funny thing is, uh, it showed up at my door the same day I got an email from Leap Motion telling me that my uh, my device shipped. So it's definitely a nice surprise, and um, you know, very uh, very well, well very well received. And as time goes on, I'll know a little more, of course, how things go with it. Um, let me know again in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe, and I again will try to start providing more videos for you guys, uh, more consistently videos on this channel. Uh, as well as the XCA channel from now on. And um, I'll talk to you guys soon.